one of my favorite gangster movies in the recent years. I think it's about 15 years old now. Um, but I personally thought it was a good movie with a great soundtrack. If anybody wants to check it out, it's Jay-Z executive produced it, and it's mostly him on the album. Um, but they did a movie on Frank Lucas, who um, right. I know you've covered on your uh, Instagram page. Um, <clears throat> talk to me about Frank Lucas. And one thing specifically before you jump in there, um, that one part of the movie that I found very interesting, and it's a part that I try to talk to these dumbass gangsters today, uh, about there's <laughs> even these dumbass young kids you know today um about putting your business out there and being too flashy um frank lucas was under the radar you know for a long time drove yep. you no know, he, he didn't drive fancy cars you know he was very low-key uh one day he decides to go to a boxing match and puts on a big ass fur coat sits mm -hmm. right in the front row and next thing you know fbi who were at the boxing match covering other gangsters they're like who is this man and yeah. now Frank Lucas is is on the radar. Um, so before my man Joe jumps into a little bit about Frank Lucas, I'm going to reiterate what I've tried to tell you dummies out there. You know, if you are committing crime, which I hope you're not, just it, it stay under the radar because you guys, they're getting caught. I mean, they're, they're selling drugs in their Instagram DM and on their Instagram stories and shit like that. And I'm like, have you not learned from the gangsters of the past? Um, but yeah, talk to me about Frank Lucas a little bit. Okay, well, do you want me to start with that specific? You, you know, know what? Whatever. I, I, I like your vibe, so you, you, whatever comes out of your, your okay. mouth, I'm good with. Um, okay. Yeah. Uh, so F Frank Lucas was a no or another, you know, Southern, um, you know, originator who was looking for a, you know, in the grand scheme of things, looking for a better life. Um, also running away from, you know, racial issues. Um, and or came to New York, came to Harlem. Um, and it's actually, American Gangster is actually not, probably not very true. Yeah, uh, I've heard that. Talk to me about some <laughs> of the inconsistencies also, but go ahead. Well, yeah, so he, I'll kind of fast forward a little bit, but he, he uh, got to Harlem, started off petty. Uh, he, this is, he claims that he, you know, dabbled in the drug game realized how much money he could make, um, you know, made a street name for himself, um, doing, you know, committing other crimes, um, and eventually, uh, came under the wing of Bumpy Johnson, who kind of professionalized him as a gangster, if you will, taught him how to dress, you know, how to, you know, make certain deals and, you know, you, you get the idea. And, uh, he eventually, you know, he, he was with Bumpy every day. He claims they took trips to Cuba. He was his driver. Um, so, you know, Frank came up under Bumpy. Um, and then eventually Bumpy died in the 60s. And this is really, he claims that he took over Bumpy's um, rackets. Um, and this is really when uh, Frank realized, you know, how much money he can make in the underworld. Um, so he didn't really want to, um, work as much. He, 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 you know, thought running a numbers spot was boring for, um, you know, so he got into back into the drug business, um, started making a whole bunch of money with the country boys organization, which was his organization, which actually they say might've been, was likely, um, you know, masterminded by his brother, Shorty Lucas. Um, and you know, then he says, in his story that Fr uh, Frank says that he, uh, you know, went to uh, the Golden Triangle and got a direct heroin connect for himself. And that, the Golden Triangle was outside of the country, right? In like uh, Vietnam or something correct. like that? Yeah, like Southeast Asia. There you go. Um, and at one point, you know, they were, he was smuggling dope in false bottoms of uh, dead Vietnamese, or excuse me, dead American soldiers of the Vietnam Vietnam War. Um, we don't know how true that is because this is, you know, this story might have been hijacked from that of Sergeant Smack, who was actually a uh, former military man out in Vietnam who was moving, you know, he founded pretty much the drug trade in the Golden Triangle um, to into America. Um, but you know, this is where it kind of gets a little confusing because a lot of people claim that everything that I said so far might not even be true about Frank Lucas. Um, I'll give you a few examples of that. Um, there's a book called Harlem Godfather, which is by 
uh, Mamie Johnson, the wife of Bumpy Johnson. And she claims that, you know, the story that Frank tells uh, pertaining to Bumpy, you know, those relations weren't so true. Uh, that Bumpy didn't, uh, Bumpy looked at Frank, you know, as no more than a, you know, occasional uh, coat carrier. So um, that's, a, that's an interesting point when you look at the Frank Lucas story uh, and, see, you know, if you don't know if it's a myth or not, you know, uh, if you look at other people around him and their stories, it, it kind of adds up, you know, to being a false story. Uh, and, you know, going forward with the Mamie Johnson link to Frank Lucas, she said that he actually was claiming the life of another Bumpy Johnson lieutenant named Flash Hayes. Um, and Flash Hayes was Bumpy's right-hand man who who really lived the life that Frank claimed under Bumpy. Um, so up to that point, we don't really know what's true or not about Frank specifically. Um, but he up in the early 70s, he that was at the actually Frazier Ali fight. Mm-hmm. He 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 claims that uh, at that fight he was trying to you know make an example of the other drug bosses who were kind of talking shit to him at a previous fight in Atlanta saying, Oh, you New York boys are supposed to dress this and that he was underdressed, I guess. So he said, all right, I'll show you. He claimed that he spent 125 K on a never before seen, um, you know, chinchilla drop, drop coat, um, with the hat to match. So that was really, like you said, that put him on the scene. Um, and you know it shut up the rest of the drug bosses. Now that there's a little connection there that I want to make. Um, at around the same time is when Frank Matthews held his uh, drug meetings in Atlanta. Um, so I kind of feel like Frank, you know, wanted to make his, the statement with the jacket at the Ali Frazier fight after one of those meetings, after the first meeting in '71. Uh, I don't know if, I mean, he could be telling the truth about the drug dealers at the Atlanta fight, but I think, uh, you know, he wasn't at that meeting that Frank Matthews hosted in Atlanta. I think he was pissed about that. He was known to have, uh, not be well liked and have like a temper. Um, I, I kind of think that was the statement he was trying to make. I, I could be wrong there, but that's kind of always the theory that I thought, um, but yeah, he said also, he claimed to say that, um, you know, he, he saw Frank Matthews at the fight and they st- they made escalating wages, wages on the uh, on a bet on the Ali Frazier fight and an FBI agent happened to be sitting in between them. This is what Frank uh, Lucas claims, um, you know, and the, they made wages all the way up to like 500K right in front of an FBI agent. And the agent, like you said before, was there like, oh, who the f- are these guys? <laughs> Um, but yeah, and then eventually Frank saw Frank Matthews disappear, a bunch of, you know, Hollywood monger with another drug dealer. Um, and there was a couple others. He saw them, their careers, you know, dissipate. And eventually in Teaneck, New Jersey, in the mid seventies, you know, his house was raided and the feds found a bunch of, uh, cash, a bunch of no drugs, but a lot of cash, uh, at his home. You know, he was sent to jail, and then they say he started ratting there. Um, long story short, um, and eventually, you know, he was out after two years. And he denies that, too, or he denied uh, ever ratting as well. But, you know, I kind of you know, uh, skipped to this end there. But, um, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a deep story. Uh, yeah, but yeah, it's very interesting because he does say that that movie – was basically a lot of bullshit uh, as well, and I think he was he did a DJ Vlad interview. I, I encourage everybody out there to check it out. Um, but yeah, he he didn't call what he did ratting. He kind of worded it a certain other way, but I guess at the end of the day, it was ratting.